Hey guys, this is Double Wide Six, and today I'm going to be making a video on this uh, X Mark Walk Behind 36. It has a uh, Kawasaki FB 460V, which is a pretty good commercial um, engine, and they're very common on older equipment. So <clears throat> this machine does not run. Um, so what we have to do is clean out the carburetor. So that's pretty much what this video is going to be about. So to start out, we're going to remove the air cleaner box. And we'll try and get in here. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get through this whole project. I uh, Actually, my in-laws kind of stopped by because they were away on vacation. So they came over to see the kids. And... Uh, my kids are pretty wild and rammy. Bobby's, uh, you know, having his treatment and chemo and that, and he's got some sores all over his mouth, and he's he was hospitalized for a while here, and, uh, you know, hasn't been doing particularly great. But uh, we did get back one of his uh, bone marrow, uh, analysis or, or reports blood work and it came back um, pretty good here so things are going in the right direction so that's pretty positive um, looks like for this carburetor there's two 12 millimeter bolts here there's one here and there's one on the other side and that should pull off this uh, air cleaner so that's the next thing I got to do I just didn't have the right wrench here So I've gotten in here with uh, a 12 millimeter ratchet and there's a uh, longer bolt in the back <clears throat> and there's a shorter bolt up front. And I've worked on these engines several times. I had a Xmark 32 that had one of these. I had a Gravely Pro 150 that had this engine. I also had a Bobcat. Might have been a Lesco. Lesco or Bobcat walk behind. I think it was a Bobcat. And uh, that one had this engine. And I'm not sure if this one's 12 and a half horsepower or 14. And, I've, and th this engine's also pretty common on some of the older John Deere's. So uh, once we get these bolts out. There's a little overflow hose on the short bolt. That should loosen up our carburetor pretty much. And the only thing left is our linkages. So let's take a look at those. So at this point we can remove our air cleaner part. There's a gasket in here so I'm trying to carefully save this gasket because I I don't have any of these on hand. Looks like it's coming off. Maybe. Maybe not. It's going to come off easier this way. There we go. So now we have that off. And we have two linkages. So up here uh, the the bent one with the spring goes up to the front and the one that has the U on it goes to the back side so we'll just pop these out and we should have access to our carburetor so try and tilt this get that off there and this one we just tilt it and work the spring out I think we'll have it there you go so we've accessed the carburetor so I have the carb off and you can see it's pretty dirty so I'm just gonna hit it with some carb cleaner and knock off some of the external dirt And I'll blow it with some compressed air. 
All right, so we have the carburetor up on the bench, and I was able to carefully get this gasket off, and it's in decent shape, so I'll be able to use that again. And <clears throat> the first thing that I want to do is uh, figure out how many turns out the screw is. You can see on the casting, I already marked the angle of the, the standard screw head, so when I'm done, it's going to be on that angle just as a reference point. So what we want to do here is take our screwdriver and we're going to lightly turn it in. So that's half a turn. That's one turn. And that's one and a half, which is pretty tight. So it's about one and a half turns, maybe a hair or less. So now I'm just going to back it out. Another thing that's pretty common with these carburetors, they're notorious for uh, the choke not being closed all the way. And if, if your engine isn't choking all the way and closing, uh, it's going to be very hard to start. So if you have one of these that's hard to start, put the uh, choke on choke and look in and determine if that butterfly is uh, closed all the way or not. Because if it's not shutting all the way it's not choked all the way and it's going to be too lean to start um, this screw is really tight so what I'm going to do is clamp this up in a vise and use my impact gun to loosen it up so I don't strip it so I have the carb snugged up in the vise and this is a screw that's really tight just making sure my impact drivers on reverse and pushing down pretty hard there we go you can see that uh, that loosened up real nice that way so that's that's a good tip for you if you don't want to um, strip out your uh, screw so this screw and this little retainer clip um, hold in a little jet here so now what I'm going to do so I'm going to carefully get a flathead screwdriver and remove that jet. And since I have it chucked up in the vise, I think it'll be a little easier to get out here. All right, it's not seated all the way, so I'm going to I'm going to seat this one and count the turns. So that's half a turn. One turn in one and a half turns in, two turns in, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, four and a half, five, five and a half. Looks like uh, this thing might not be threaded. So let me try and get some needle nose and just see if that pulls straight out. That could be why they used the uh, retainer clip. Yep. And if we look closely at that, there is an O-ring on it. So uh, that's kind of what holds it in there. So we have that out, and we'll probably put a new O-ring on there if it needs it. All right, so now I'm pulling off the bowl nut. And I had the bowl off the day I got it just to see if it would start and I, I I just pulled the bowl out and looked at how bad it looked you can see it's still pretty bad and uh, <clears throat> I, I had a little fuel in there and uh, I did get the engine to fire but it just wouldn't run properly so I know it has spark and good compression so we'll try and get out this hinge pin, which seems to be in here kind of tight, so we can get our float off. 
I'm gonna have to tap on that or something. So I clamped it back up in the vise because uh, the little pin here that holds the float is really stuck or rusted in place. So I'm just trying to tap it out. There we go. I got it moving. Now, now I should be able to pull it out with some needle nose from the other side. So as you can see, I got the uh, float off. And uh, if we look up the center, the main jet on this thing is going right up the center. So just taking a standard screwdriver and we're going to loosen this guy up. And this is usually where most of the problems are. I think we have it loose. There we go. There's one, and there's one more up in there, I believe. So I'm going to need a slightly bigger screwdriver. Yeah, let me get another screwdriver for that. Alright, now that I have a slightly bigger screwdriver, I can get in here and we can loosen up this jet. Just want to take your time, be careful not to damage the uh, threads. I have a special screwdriver that doesn't have a widened shank, but I don't know where it is right now. So just being very careful with this one, which happens to fit. And then we want to pull this jet out and uh, there's little holes in here that we're going to clean out and if we look closely at this carb there's rust in here this this rust can get into the fuel and and clog up the carburetor so um, i'm going to scrub all this area up and get it nice and clean since i have to clean everything i'm going to be using carb cleaner i'm going to carefully try and pull this bowl gasket out of here I don't want to damage that with the cleaners and I'm I'm just gonna use a, a toothbrush like this and some carb cleaner and I'm just gonna go through and try and clean all this up so with the magic of TV it should be clean when I get back here well, I'm just gradually working my way through each piece here. And for this particular jet, I'm just putting in a small drill bit and trying to clean any debris out and any debris in the drill flutes if that'll focus. Uh, you want to keep going till you don't get any more debris showing up in those flutes. And then I would say that's pretty clean. Also, these little holes in each jet, I'm just running a wire through, but you can clearly see through those. So I have everything cleaned off about um, the best I could get it with uh, basically just a toothbrush and some compressed air and some carb cleaner. And any holes I found on the carburetor, I uh, cleaned with carb cleaner, all these guys. And then inside here, there's a couple little tiny holes on the side where I tried to get those. This hole we blew out. And there's three holes here. We just blew some carb cleaner through those. And all the pieces of the carburetor, the jets and that, I cleaned up. Tried to get all the holes as clean as possible. So... Now I'm just going to reassemble everything. Well, it took a while, but we'll see if this thing works.
Seems to be running real nice. That was a cold start, so it took like two pulls. Um, so I'm pretty impressed with that. This carburetor took a little while to clean. It was pretty dirty. I probably have about an hour and 15 minutes into it. Um, other things that need to be done with this tractor is it has a Velke, but I'm missing the hitch on the tractor end. So I'm going to take that metal there and make something so the Velke will work. And uh, I don't really know what else it needs, but oh, I know the the bag has a uh, you know it's like a fabric bag, and then it has plastic down here, and you can see there's like a little tear in the plastic. So uh, I'm gonna patch that thing up because I know that bag's like 200 bucks at least. So uh, I don't know. We'll have to drive this thing around, make sure everything works. Transmission blades. The blades were sharp. I already cleaned the deck on it, so. Um, hopefully this video helps you out if you have an FB460V, which, like I said, is a very common engine on uh, older equipment, particularly walk-behinds, and I know it's on a lot of John Deere tractors as well. So I'm Double Wide 6. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and if you uh, are looking for other small engine repair videos, you can check out my channel. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. Take care.